Various optional accessories can be fitted, such as a stroke limiter. This must be removed before replacing a diaphragm. Before removal, we advise that you measure the installation length of the opening limiter as a point of reference to facilitate subsequent refitting. Now undo the lock nut using an appropriate tool and dismantle the opening limiter. The neutral position of the valve is important. This can be recognized by the position of the control air connector, for example. For the valve shown, which is closed by spring force, the control air connector is at the lower end of the actuator. Closed valves must be set to the open position before disassembling the actuator. Use an appropriate tool to undo and remove the screws diagonally and anti-clockwise. If the screws are difficult to turn, we recommend that you replace them. After removing the actuator, you can inspect the valve seat. Any contamination can be removed carefully without tools. The actuator is moved to the closed position. The PTFE face is inverted upwards by hand and unscrewed anti-clockwise. The EPDM backing diaphragm can then be removed. Since the compressor can be removed, make sure when reassembling that it is inserted correctly again into the guide. This secures the compressor in the correct position, whereby the orientation of the seal contour correctly aligns with the sealing weir of the valve body. Before installing the diaphragm, we recommend that you check the material code. A new diaphragm should always be used for each disassembly. The backing diaphragm is placed on the actuator flange in the correct position. The GIMU Code 5M diaphragm has a mechanical stop on the thread. The PTFE face is inverted upwards by hand and screwed into the valve spindle clockwise as far as it will go. The PTFE diaphragm face is now turned back to the closest possible match of the whole pattern, a maximum of 180 degrees. The diaphragm face must be folded back to its original position by hand. Assembly of the diaphragm is now complete. The tabs of the diaphragm face and the backing diaphragm can be positioned on opposite sides. The advantage of this is that the information on both tabs is visible. It also makes no difference from a technical point of view if both tabs are on top of one another. The actuator is moved back to the open position. If you have assembled the diaphragm in the correct position, its seal contour will automatically be aligned with the sealing weir of the valve body. During assembly of the actuator, make sure that the control air connector is aligned in its previous position. The connecting bolts are inserted from the body side and hand-tightened clockwise with the hexagon nuts. Washers should be used on both sides. The valve actuator must then be moved to the closed position. Manually operated actuators are moved to a half-closed position. As the screws are not yet completely tightened, the diaphragm and actuator can center themselves on the valve body when the valve is closed and the diaphragm is placed under low stress. The screws are tightened evenly crosswise in several steps until the PTFE diaphragm face is flat and parallel to the valve body. This ensures correct assembly of the GIMU Code 5M diaphragm. 
Over-tightened screws can have a negative effect on the function and service life of the diaphragm. Diaphragms are subject to natural setting behavior. We recommend periodically checking and, if required, retightening the threaded connections. Compared with the previous GIMU Code 5E diaphragm that is tightened until a slight bulge can be seen, the GIMU Code 5M diaphragm is fitted level and parallel to the valve body. A compression is not visible externally. This occurs internally at the optimized seal contour. If you previously disassembled a stroke limiter, refit it now. The originally measured installation position is used for orientation and to achieve the approximate flow rate. When fitting the new diaphragm, the required flow rate value must be checked using suitable reference instruments. Readjustment may be required. After this, secure the opening limiter with the lock nut again. Due to the natural setting behavior of diaphragm sealing materials, particularly after the first sterilization process, we recommend that you check the compression of the diaphragms periodically and retighten the flange fasteners if necessary.